Professor Alain Ramon, who is my good friend from, uh, I was going to say MIT, my good friend from the Technion, he will introduce Professor uh, Zeg Jean Li, who is uh, graciously uh, participating in this conference. And it's another, uh, uh, Madlik, how do you say that? Another enlightening talk that we are going to have today. Please. So I'm uh, really honored to present our next speaker. Professor Zhang Li is a full professor at Hong Kong University of Science of, and Technology. Professor Zhang Li, in addition of being first-rate scientist in robotics, he is also an amazing industrial entrepreneur. And I should mention two companies that he owns, manages, and they're extremely successful. The first one, it's a, it's a motion control company called Google Tech and which has contact with Galil Motion Control here in Israel. The second company, I'm sure you all heard about, it's too famous not to know about, it's called TJI. It's a drone company that makes a, a very famous a series of drones that fly and have those automatic cameras. In fact, this mounts the prestigious Wired magazine has a special article on this company. I just actually finished reading it very carefully. It turns out that they are controlling something like 70% of the world market. So it's really amazing. Last, Professor Zhisheng Li is the author of the famous Li, Mary, and Sastri book on robot control and robot grasping, which is still considered the dominant textbook in robotics. So please welcome Professor Zhisheng Li. Uh, thanks, uh, Elon, for the uh, introduction. Uh, okay, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I know that, uh, you know, from all the talks uh, today, uh, autonomous driving is uh, regarded uh, as the, you know, problem or uh, biggest challenge and also biggest uh, uh, opportunities uh, for robotics. And uh, today, I'd like to convince you that uh, there's uh, another problem, which is uh, manipulation and the autonomous uh, assembling of uh, small parts products, such as the iPhone that uh, you have, is uh, a problem of uh, at least equal magnitude in terms of uh, impact, okay? So uh, today I'd like to share with you the work of many who have uh, contributed to the development uh, of the understanding of the manipulation problem, okay? But uh, before that, I uh, you know, tell you the story how I got uh, involved into this problem, okay? Uh, it was uh, sometime probably 1982 when we were all undergraduate students okay, at uh, CMU, okay, Robotics Institute was uh, just uh, established. And I took a course in robotics and was uh, frustrated you know, because uh, of my poor hands-on skill. I have no sense what the homogeneous uh, transformations uh, mean, okay. So then I went to Berkeley and I volunteered myself to organize the graduate robotics uh, seminar. I invited uh, Mark Kakowski and also Yushi Nakamura to give uh, two seminars on multi-fingered manipulation, okay. Because I have a pair of hands so I was uh, very impressed uh, by the complexity of the motion. But uh, at uh, that time, the only mathematical tool available to understand uh, such complex motion was uh, screw theory, okay? I was pretty much uh, screwed up by it. <laughs> so then one day, my advisor, Professor Shankar Sastri, brought me a paper by Roger Brockett on the product of uh, exponential formula. And uh, there, the relation between infinitesimal motion and the finite motion, at least for the case of uh, Euclidean group, was uh, beautifully displayed. 
I immediately fall in love with it and spent uh, the next uh, 30 years, you know, try to understand it and they also make use of that to understand the problem, okay? And also this uh, talk is a tribute to many of the people who made the contribution. Okay, so here is uh, a outline. I know, you know, it's uh, very late in the afternoon and the, I will try to be just uh, as brief as possible. And the, I will briefly introduce uh, the geometric tools, okay? And the, connect that with uh, the problems in manipulation, okay? Those are very geometric in nature, and they, they are interconnection. And they also, uh, I was very fortunate to be involved in the startup of a few companies with my students, where the geometric uh, tools or theory played a fundamental role, okay? So we are trying to bring that uh, experience and also uh, resource to more young robotic entrepreneurs, okay? And I think uh, finally the time is mature to address this uh, grand challenge problem. How do you automate assembling of uh, small parts products? So, um, and we all know that uh, the geometry can be roughly uh, classified or separated into the Euclidean geometry and the non-Euclidean or the modern geometry. And the, we know the work of uh, Euclid from elements and the Descartes by using coordinate system. So you can describe uh, points in space by three triplets or n tuple of numbers, right? And the Newton Leibniz developed calculus on top of that. And also Gossip Munch introduced uh, calculus to engineering. So today we know that uh, either by simplification or approximation, all engineering problems or lots of uh, engineering problems can be formulated as uh, a optimization problem in Euclidean space. And the non-Euclidean geometry or differentiable manifold, Gauss introduced that for dimension one and the two. His uh, postal remark generalized that to dimension three and higher. Selfish Lee Klein introduced a special class of uh, differentiable manifold. And the notations we use are due to Herman Weil and the SS chain is, uh, you know, produce a great impact to the Berkeley Mass and the engineering program. Jerry Mustang built the bridge between the Mass program and also the engineering program. So the uh, application of uh, non-Euclidean or non-Euclidean geometry to kinematics, the classical uh, history of uh, geometric robotics probably start with uh, uh, Franz Rolli, okay? He discovered that uh, rigid motions generated by the six lower pairs all form subgroups of the Euclidean group. And they, of course, uh, Bohr, you know, developed uh, the kinematics uh, or screw theory. And they, of course, uh, later the chairman of Aftomi, this is uh, a big community on that. And also the names uh, which are pretty much familiar okay, to the community. And I think uh, V is uh, probably the cutting off point. He is between the classical and the modern geometric robotics. So the modern geometric robotics, I would really credit the, to the work of Roger Brockett for the product of uh, exponential formula, which I will explain it later and also his, uh, several of his outstanding PhD, David Montana, Longcaric, Frank Park, made a profound contributions to this area. And also the Berkeley group, uh, Shankar, his uh, PhD students, uh, Peyton, Richard Murray, and actually Yima extended the same tool to 3D computer vision, okay, in that uh, textbook. And of course, the MIT group, 
and the Riemann and the with uh, Joe Burdick applied the uh, geometric uh, tools uh, to a multi-body uh, contact and also the names uh, here and they also Martin Booth on grasping force optimization and Tony Beach non-phononomic hand. And the Vijay Kumar extended the tool to quad rotor trajectory generation and control. So the names uh, can go on, okay, and uh, I may apologize if I miss, uh, you know, lots of names here. So um, here I like to just give you a a uh, short list of uh, problems which I believe are geometric in nature. If you understand the geometry, you understand uh, pretty much uh, those problems. So the first problem is uh, dynamic, or uh, you know, how do you describe rigid body motion, including the kinematics, trajectory generation, dynamics, uh, stability control, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. The second class of uh, problem is for open chain manipulators and the, the forward inverse dynamics uh, control all those uh, issues. And the third class of uh, problem is uh, multi-finger hands. And uh, how do you model the kinematics of uh, contact? And uh, how do you model grasping force optimization problem and uh, all those? And the fourth uh, class of uh, problem, parallel mechanism. And the examples are listed here for the analysis synthesis. And the fifth uh, class of uh, problem, you know, there are a few very special mechanisms, including the shoulder joints you know, for our shoulder, the eyeball movement. What are the precise tools allow you to describe the motion type of those uh, mechanisms and also be able to synthesize you know, versions uh, related, uh, you know, from that. And the machine tool design, the CV joints, uh, the parallel spindle head, and the also, you know, for the uh, precise modeling analysis and the synthesis, okay. And the non holonomic motion planning system, including how do you re, you know, re uh, manipulating a egg object within your hand, and you understand how a falling cat land on the feet, okay, and also parallel parking a car, okay, all those problems are similar in nature, and they are called non-hononomic systems, so for their modeling, planning, control, etc. okay. And the eighth class of a problem is uh, tolerance notions, okay, because to control the quality of products, you need to have uh, various notions of tolerancing, okay? What are the right mathematical tools to formulate those notions precisely and they use that for their verification? And they also work piece localization, okay, of uh, symmetric, uh, non-symmetric, and also partially machined work piece is critical, okay? And how do you model those problems? And uh, today we see that uh, dual arm systems are increasingly being utilized. Those we call the left and the right hands. How do we have a, a tool to model those systems and also for the uh, synthesis and the calibration? And uh, today all the assemblies are done in the fashion of work cell. Multiple robots are involved in a work cell. And the 3D sensing is very popular. So we can have a precise model of the workspace. That will allow motion planning techniques to be utilized and also for calibration of such a work cell. So these problems can go on and there is a long list. And I like to you know, give a brief flavor of the, okay, sorry that the, uh, you know, the LaTeX uh, doesn't work on here. And so if we have a function defined on Euclidean space, and we wish to minimize the function, right, what do we do? Well, we try to find for the critical points, then look at the hashing, right, to decide if that is a minimal or maximal. And to find the critical points, we have to compute directional derivative, okay? And to compute the directional derivative, we have to use geometric property of the underlying space. 
So unless you know the geometric property of the underlying space, it is difficult to do it. So in the case of, uh, you know, we wish to extend, you know, calculus on Rn to calculus on manifold, okay? Of course, you will ask, what is a manifold? i just give you a simple example. You know, if you have a unit sphere, how do you describe points on a unit sphere? You use latitude and the longitude coordinates to do that, right? But if you do so, you will run into singularities, which are the North Pole, South Pole, meridian line connecting the North and the South Pole. So to capture every point on the surface, you have to introduce another coordinate system. And the, hopefully, its singularity will not overlap with the red one. And for points, in between, you have red coordinates and also yellow coordinates. And you impose the change of coordinates, be smooth, okay? So those kind of coordinates are called compatible, okay? So if you pile them up, you will get uh, a differentiable structure. So the unit sphere with a differentiable structure is called a manifold, okay? And in robotics, uh, you know, manifold abounds, okay? Rn, okay, is uh, one example. The configuration space of a two degree of freedom revolute joints is a two-dimensional torus, product of a two unit circle. And the, a six degree of freedom industry robot is a six di dimensional torus. And uh, there is a special class of uh, um, uh, manifold, okay, in the case uh, of, uh, you know, the sets of rotations, okay, we realize that if we multiply two rotation matrices, we get a rotation matrix, right? So, yeah, the group operation under the manifold structure are compatible. So that is called a Lie group, okay? Surface Lie introduced that. And also the um, special Euclidean group that we use to represent the Euclidean motion of a rigid body is also a Lie group. And if uh, a unique advantage of a Lie group is that it has a canonical coordinate system given by the exponential map, okay? So that, you know, any Lie group, you take the tangent space at the identity. And in the case of the rotation group, all the three by three skew symmetric matrices. And in the case of the special Euclidean group, the set of twist elements, okay? And the exponential map for rotation is simply rotation about a fixed axis. And the for special Euclidean group are screw motion, okay, along an axis. Okay, so if you have a linear space, then you have a subspace. You have a lead group, then you have a subgroup. And then we realize uh, motion generated by revolute joints forms a subgroup and also motion generated by the six uh, uh, lower pairs form subgroups, okay? And uh, using this exponential map, you can formulate the forward kinematics as a product of a six exponential. That is a bracket POE formula. And uh, using this elegant formulation, you have a beautiful description of the Jacobian, the inverse kinematics, and also study optimum workspace design, okay? <clears throat> and also, you can formulate the falling cat problem as uh, a nonlinear control problem over the product of uh, two rotation groups. And uh, you will show this is a control system, controllable system, and uh, there are certain subsets of uh, a Lie group that is not closed under multiplication, okay? But uh, still smooth. Those are called uh, submanifolds, okay? And uh, this is a special class of uh, submanifolds that is given by the exponential of a subspace in the Lie algebra, which is closed under triple bracket, not double bracket, okay? You can use that, and this is called the exponential submanifold. This is used to describe the motion of your eyeball, the motion of the CV joints, the motion of your shoulder joints, okay? No other better mathematical models for that. Five minutes, I will. 
So remaining manifold, if you have a metric, and then you can you know, define geodesic and all this, and in robotics or rigid body motion using kinetic energy as the metric, the Newton Euler equation becomes the geodesic equation, and then you have the dynamics of the open chain manipulator algorithm that is ON, and also can be factorized for later you know, control algorithm design. And also for grasping of a multi-finger hand, you can formulate that as a convex optimization problem in a Riemannian manifold. Okay. So, and also homogeneous space, uh, I will probably just uh, take one second, you know, if you want to describe motion of uh, a symmetric object, such as a cylinder, it has a symmetry, okay. So the configuration space of this is simply the quotient by its symmetry. And uh, using that formulation, you will see that the workpiece localization becomes a least square problem in the homogeneous space if you have a symmetry. Otherwise, it is in the, takes place in the Euclidean space. And also, the notions of uh, tolerancing, okay. You know, this is a very, you know, in, if you use a vector calculus, it is terrible. You have to have one formulation for each different cases. But if you realize that those are all about the displacement of the symmetric features, then it becomes a minimax problem in homogeneous spaces. And the algorithm that you have is very precise. Okay. So in the next four minutes, okay, I will just go through briefly you know, what this algorithm allow you to do. Well, your program will be very compact, very efficient, and they, you will do a lot of things online instead of offline. So the first company called the Google Tech, we use uh, some of those geometric algorithms for the motion control of uh, various uh, machinery. Those are some of the products that we have. Okay. This uh, now today is a major mach uh, motion control company in China. We have around 50% uh, you know, of the market share. And they also, that, uh, you know, remember, when I was an undergraduate student, I didn't have the opportunity to do hands-on. So when I become a professor, I try to provide them with both hands-on skill and the geometric, you know, tools for them. So I had a course to teach students on robot competition, and a group of students come off from this course, become entrepreneurs. So they have a geometric reasoning, and also they have experimental tools available to them. Okay, those are some of the students who went on to, you know, have uh, their own companies. Okay, Wang Mingyu is uh, one company, DJI, Wang Tao, and uh, you know there are many other examples. So actually, Frank Wang he took the course twice, and for his uh, final year project, he built a controller for a helicopter. And later on, he thought he might sell a few controllers to hobbyists uh, in the community. So he set up a company called uh, DJI. And uh, those are some of the earlier products. And uh, the flagship product is the Phantom, which is uh, out of the box, ready to fly drones. Okay. And uh, also, those uh, products won lots of awards, including the best product from the Times magazine and they also best design from Times Magazine. And they also, this, uh, you know, is uh, a, you know, history in the drone community as we, you know, close the chapter of DIY, okay, into a integrated uh, product. And also the company today grow to more than 5,000 people last year, you know, with more than 1 billion revenue, okay. And they also the uh, QKM, and they, you understand uh, what, uh, where does the name come from, you know, derives from the quotient, okay. We have uh, the geometric tool to design robots, and uh, this company is targeting at, you know, precise assembling automation solution. And, uh, okay, so I will now go through this uh, problem, okay. And uh, this is another example, and uh, those are some of the, uh, you know, more examples. And also, I think uh, one thing, you know, over the last uh, 20 years or so, the students went through lots of uh, experience and, uh, you know, success, failure. 
And we believe this experience are useful okay, to you know, entrepreneurs in the robotics community. And uh, you know, this is the place where we are, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, and Dongguan. This place has a nickname called the Hollywood of Makers because of the impressive supply chain all around here. Okay? You have all kinds of design company, logistic components, and the manufacturing company. You can reduce your you know, de deployment or the development cycle from a month or from years to you know, one-tenth of the time. So we felt this uh, environment might be very useful for students from around the globe, especially maybe students from Israel. Okay? So we decided to establish a, a robotic incubation facility with all the experience and all the lessons we learned. We tried to provide them with the critical components they need and also the supply chain and also even angel fund to them so that uh, they can go from stage to stage and they can realize the dreams just like uh, Frank Wang of DJI did. Okay. So um, I think uh, I will not go through this and I think uh, one minute for the last grand challenge problem. Okay. So I think uh, the C3 stands for you know, communication, computer, consumer products. Okay? And 70% uh, of all those products are manufactured in China. Okay? And uh, this industry employs around uh, probably 50 million or 25 to 50 million workers to assemble the various gadgets. Okay? And if you, uh, those are the various process, okay, from components to module to the final product, okay. And they are mostly done by workers. And I will not show you the video. I think you can Google the Foxconn video, you know, which employ 1.6 million workers to assemble these products, okay. And this is not very much different from some 80 years ago, okay, the same scenario, okay, exactly takes place in the vast amount of a factory. And uh, we hope that uh, we could, uh, you know, today fully manual, okay, uh, you know, assemble line, and it become step by step, you know, op automated. And this will not take place overnight. It will take place gradually. And, uh, the next stage, perhaps some of the critical modules will be accomplished by robots or by work cells. And then eventually, you know, we hope to be able to automate the whole process. Okay. So there are lots of grand challenging problems, including those problems that I highlighted, which I will not go through those problems. Because uh, this industry is very different from the automobile industry. The life cycle of this, instead of 10 years, is only one year, okay? And the cost is very different. So the challenge is completely different, and the, I believe that, uh, you know, the work of the robotics community over the last 10 or 20 years, you know, probably make us uh, ready for this, uh, address this uh, grand challenge. Okay, so I think uh, I will conclude the talk Okay, with a few highlights, you know, the geometric uh, robotics should be a, you know, provide a rigorous, precise, and also unified tool for treating diverse, complex behavior of various robotic systems. And uh, after 30 years of development, the theory are mature, the algorithm are ready. And uh, now, you know, just like the autonomous driving, C3, you know, manufacturing automation, become another grand challenge problem. And the, the key, rapid iteration, fast scaling up. Okay, those are the key issues we have to capture. Okay, thank you.